Flying is the only way to reach the remote town of Arviat. Once you're there, the subarctic landscape turns out to be as hauntingly beautiful as it is achingly cold. Living here has many challenges, as Lorraine of Katia knows well. She and her husband are raising six energetic kids inside their small house. So you don't let them play outside too much? No, I try to let them stay in most of the time. And it's not because of the cold. Inuit people have inhabited this land for more than a thousand years. The real threat lurking outdoors is polar bears. It's very scary to stay out during the polar bear season and I try not to take my kids anywhere that's not safe. This is a growing problem for some communities near the Arctic Circle and it may be linked to climate change. I've come here to meet Lorraine's dad, who sounds like the tundra's answer to Crocodile Dundee. And hopefully, I'll even see a polar bear myself. My name is Leo Ikakak. And I am from here, from Arviet, and I do the polar bear monitor here in Arviet. Keeping the town safe? Um, yeah, I, I try to keep everybody safe. Leo has been Arviat's polar bear monitor for the past five years. How often do you see bears around town at this time of year? Oh, pretty much every day. So what's in here? Uh, my, my personal, like my rifle and gun and my work um, shotgun. And this is your work shotgun? Yeah, it's a 12 gauge. Right. And what do you load that with? Um, I load that with uh, this kind of, well, these are rubber bullets. Right. When you're out there and like the, sometimes the weather's gonna get really cold and, and the rubber's gonna get hard right. and that's gonna sting them and, and hopefully teach them a lesson. Leo's job puts him at the front line of the increasing interactions between polar bears and humans. And over the years, he's honed his tactics. And this is called a starter um, pistol. Right. They just make a really loud bang noise. And is that often enough to scare them away? Yeah. And do you have a, a gun with real bullets just in case? Um, yeah, and I try to Play it safe, but if I would ever come up to come up to that, like uh, defend myself, yeah, I will do it. But but so far, um, been good. Like that, I didn't have to put down a like a bear. Aside from the danger of polar bear attacks, Leo's grandkids have a pretty normal Canadian upbringing. What's today? Halloween. What do you like best about Halloween? Candy. Good answer. Of course, getting candy usually means trick or treating door to door. But Halloween falls at the peak of polar bear season. So to keep them safe from bears, Arviat's come up with a unique alternative. And Lorraine and her family are off to join in. All of them piling in to the local equivalent of the family minivan. <laughs> Riding in a sled is a standard way to get around Arviat. There are about two and a half thousand people here, and almost half of them are kids under 18. Hello. 
and this is Halloween Arviat style. Safely inside, away from the polar bears. Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween to you too! The town council has created a wonderland of childhood terrors, including this one, who's a long way from home. One line, one line, one line. How many bags did you make? Ah, uh, 960. Enough for all the kids in town? I hope so. The candy fueled fun isn't enough to make people forget about the real threat outside. I, I worry about bears because there's like nine polar bears each night that comes in to upgrade or outside the community. And they have good reason to be scared. This footage captures what an actual polar bear attack looks like. It happened in Russia. This woman survived, but another person was reportedly eaten alive. And these photos show victims of polar bear attacks in Canada, from a town right next door to Aviat. I got to have fuel on my transportation and I gotta have fuel in my body. In Leo's kitchen, he tells me why his town sees so many bears at this time of year. They're on the move. When they migrate, they go through here, right to our community out of it, and they just continue on. And they go like north. Like. So yeah, they're heading north, yeah. like right along the coast and once the ice forms, like they can pretty much take like shortcuts. It's nearly time for Leo to start the afternoon patrol. Some pretty serious uh, overalls you've got there. Hey, it gets pretty cold out there, I guess. Yeah, it does. How cold are we talking? Um, like right now, I think it's not super cold, but it's maybe maybe minus 10 right now, but, but I know it's going to get colder. And this is a um, slug that I was talking about. I always keep this in one of my pockets where I can just like, grab it, load and, and shoot. I'm always at risk like being out there alone and, and I want to come home safely in one piece to my family, so I always think, like I'm always like prepared. Leo's aim is to protect the polar bears from people as much as people from the polar bears. Before he started patrolling, bears were being regularly killed in self-defense. Sometimes there were like maybe three, five, or six different kills in a year. Yeah, they're pretty smart. And especially the female with cubs, like they're really, they're, they're pretty dangerous. You got to really watch yourself. Because when they, once they get hold of you, like, you're history, so. Leo starts the patrol by checking the outskirts of town, where people keep their sled dogs and where bears like to sniff around for a meal. A couple of times they, they're gonna kill a dog or two and, or injure a dog. This time of the day, they're gonna be probably sleeping out there and by the end of the day, they're gonna start moving. As I see the town recede in the distance, I start to appreciate the subtle beauty of this landscape, as well as its potential for cruelty. This icy environment is much more the polar bear's home than it is ours. When the weather changes, they from warm to cold, and that's when they get active.
polar bear tracks. No. Yeah. Going north. Yeah. Probably we just missed it. Can you tell how fresh that is? Those things are pretty fresh. Yeah, they're pretty fresh, fresh tracks. It seems this bear has already moved on. Down at the edge of the Hudson Bay, the winter freeze up has only just started. The ice hasn't formed yet, so it's far to the coast. The Arctic is warming twice as fast as anywhere else in the world, but solid sea ice is vital for the bears. They've been fasting all summer and they're now hungry to get out on the ice and hunt for their main food source, seals. But climate change may be disrupting that cycle. I've seen the difference that compared to, like if you go back a couple of years, like, like in fall time when, when it's supposed to be freezing up and sometimes like it'll look like it's going the opposite way. They, it feels like springtime. When that happens, the bears are stuck, waiting at the shoreline where Arviat sits. Do they come into town more in those years? Uh, yeah, in the late freeze up, yeah, they do because like the ice hasn't formed and they're going to be right along the shore and so, yeah, they're going to see more bears. Given the vast areas around town, Leo doesn't just rely on patrols to manage the bears. So what is this? Oh, this is our lucky bear trap. Last year we caught uh, 14 uh, bears, polar bears. And how does it work? Well, first like, we uh, put like baits right by the front entrance here. Yeah. Like this small little size and, but that's the main uh, bait, it's right on the trigger. Mm -hmm. And once they bite that and pull, and there's a pin right here. Yeah. So it'll go off like that and it'll close the door. This bear has been captured in the neighboring town of Churchill, 250 kilometers south of Arviat. Churchill has a holding facility for problem bears. Here they're tranquilized, marked with a green dye, and then airlifted out of town. The problem is they're dropped away from Churchill, but closer to Arviat, where some of these green spot bears later turn up on Leo's patch. Back in town, Leo takes a well-earned break from patrolling. For years, he was the only monitor, but now he gets help from the province's wildlife officers. And the workplace gossip in their native Inuktitut is pretty special. Five times trap, we'll just do it. <laughs> Polar bears are a fascination that everyone here shares, and I'm still eager to see one. It turns out that making their peace with bears is just one of the ways locals have adapted to life in the Arctic extremes. The basics in the local store include a full range of furs to trim your parkas. Underground water mains aren't an option here, so water and sewerage trucks visit every house every day to pump water in and out. Leo Ikake? Yeah, she's working night shift, all night. 
Does he do a good job? Yeah. yeah. He's a good man. And then there's Arviat's strange understanding of a beach holiday. So this is the beach house. This is the common kitchen, the common living area. And as you look out the window, that's Hudson Bay. And in the winter, people turn the couch around and they watch the polar bears because they're all out here in the winter time. Polar bears are amazing. They're just beautiful creatures. Sheila Crooks is the local hotel manager. She reckons I'll get to see a bear if I take a trip with her to the town dump. So a lot of the townspeople come out to the dump as an easy viewing spot. They, they do actually. Um, we had it turns out that watching out. bears at the dump from the safety of cars is a local entertainment. But as night falls, I still haven't seen one. Good and bad that we don't see them, right? Because technically we don't want them in town. Yeah. So it's good that they're not out here. There's a complicated sort of relationship because we do really want to see them. They're... That's true, yeah. They're the largest land carnivore in the world, you know? So it's... And yet somehow they come off as cuddly. Yeah, like the Coca Cola. We're about to give up when there's a movement in the distance. Oh, there's one. There's one, darling. We're going to pull in. I see it. It's by the fence. It's a youngish bear. Not a cub, but still only a few years old. I'm excited to be seeing one, but the fact that it's in a dump is a painful reminder of the impact of humans even here in this remote place. Oh, they're going to bring them towards us. And I didn't realize we were really, going to be quite this close. <laughs> Polar bears are stealth hunters with keen noses. So the scent of the dump attracts them from far across the tundra. Bears find plenty to eat here. Although their primary diet is seals, Polar bears can eat anything from caribou to ducks, berries, seaweed, and humans. Despite that, one local steps out to take a photo. <laughs> yeah, okay. Unfast, the bear eventually wanders off into the night. It's my last night in Arviat. Delicious. Leo's wife Doreen and a friend are settling down to bingo, which is played over the town's radio to save going outside. I want to. But while everyone else relaxes, for Leo, it's time to get back to work. Are you liking it? You like it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, good luck on your bingo. Okay, hey, how about time? Where are we going first? So we're gonna go check the bear trap uh, down towards the dump. We will check the other one. In the driving snow, we come across a family heading home. Apparently a hunter has killed a polar bear. So we go to take a look. Canada allows Inuit communities to continue their traditional hunting of polar bears. But the quotas are small. Arviat is allowed eight bear kills per year but I wasn't expecting to see one of them myself. Yeah, a big male. How can you tell it's a male? Just look at the size of the hindquarters and the neck. That's a neck right there. As a city-born outsider, it's a little shocking to see a polar bear reduced to a hunk of meat and a hide. But Inuit people have been hunting bears for centuries and a fur can fetch up to $10,000. They can either sell it or make clothing out of it. Like, um, like wind, 
wind pans, you can, they can make mitts. Is it soft? Yeah. In the light of day, hunting gives way to science. The bears that are killed provide useful information for researchers, although it's not a pretty sight. About how old would this one be? That one will be about six, seven years old. Joe Savikatak Jr. is one of Leo's co-workers. He collects samples from every harvested bear and sends it off for testing to monitor the health of the population. As far as scientists can tell, bear numbers are on a slight decline. But Leo, at least, is hopeful that they'll survive a changing climate. Without ice, they're not, they're not going to just die or starve to death. They can still snatch a seal right in the open water. As winter starts to set in, Leo's job is almost done for the year. The sea ice is really starting to solidify and the bears are heading miles from land to hunt for seals. Anything out there? Can't see any bears. Arviat has got through another autumn without harm and with only minimal interruption from bears. On my last day here, it's already minus 41 degrees with the wind chill. In a few months time, the bears will return from their winter haunts. But Leo Akakik will be ready and waiting for them. Do you like your job? Yeah, pretty much. It's a good and scary job, but yeah, I really like my job. You think you'll keep doing it for a while? Um, as long as they want me, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs>